Dead and tied together on the shore of the Hudson River last week. Uh, authorities still don't know exactly what happened to them. Suicide is a leading theory, but some interesting new details um, came out today and were reported by the police and wanted to catch you up and get your comments on it. So if you have comments while we're on the air, uh, you can write to me on Twitter at Lookner, at L O O K N E R, on Twitter. Uh, thank you, by the way. Uh, to um, our viewer, uh, sorry, our um, our moderators, Mark Helton, Elizabeth Granville, and uh, Mark and Elizabeth. I appreciate you guys. Um, I appreciate you guys being moderating in the YouTube chat. Thank you. All right, so let's uh, get to the details, and um, let's start with this NBC article. Uh, now, if you don't, if you actually, if you don't, let me just catch people up. If you don't, if you're not familiar with the actual story, um, the story is that last week, let me, just, let me just recap the story. Last Wednesday, these two Saudi sisters, uh, 22 and 16 years, 16 years old, Rotana and Tala Faria, they washed up dead on the shore of the Hudson River in New York City. Uh, they had been tied together. Uh, with duct tape at the waist and at the ankles, and it has not been clear what happened to them. They had gone; they hadn't talked to their mother in a little while, um, and um, and uh, it was it's still not it was not clear how they got there. Uh, had they committed suicide? Had they been murdered? And that's what authorities have been trying to figure out. So uh, we got some new details in this today, and uh, a bunch of them. So let's just talk about the new things that uh, that came up. That came out. So, um, so first, uh, I just want to. There's, there's a bunch of stuff here. Um, let me, I'll just go through the article, and then there's some specific points. I, I, there's actually, I think, one or two things I don't even mention in the article that they talk about in the, in the police in the, in the press conference. So, let's just go through some of these details here. Two Saudi sisters whose bodies were found together in the New York Hudson River were running out of money and desperate not to return home. Investigators said Friday. Now. I have not heard this detail before that they were running out of money. I know a, 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 a chatter in one of our in one of our videos, the last couple we did on this, had suggested they might have been running out of money. But again, that's a new detail. They were running out of money and desperate not to return home. Now, there had been a uh, the, the mother had told authorities that the mother the mother said she had gotten a call from the embassy, the Saudi embassy, the day before they they were recovered, the bodies were recovered saying that the family had been ordered home because the two daughters had requested political asylum. Um, they had asked for political asylum in the United States. Now, that has not been confirmed by the U.S., but uh, if that were true, obviously it would be a sign. If they were requesting asylum, if they were requesting to stay in the United States because they feared being persecuted for their political beliefs back in Saudi Arabia, uh, that would suggest they didn't want to go back to Saudi Arabia. So, again, uh, the, the, uh, investigators said they were running out of money and they were desperate not to return home. Uh, in a briefing at lower at police headquarters in Lower Manhattan, the NYPD police uh, chief of detectives, Dermot Shea, shed new light on the sisters' mysterious disappearance and the macabre deaths. Um, this is a tragedy all the way around. There is uh, now the lead detective said there's no credible information that a crime has taken place. That would suggest they're leaning more and more towards suicide. He said there's no credible information that a crime has taken place. Uh, the sisters were initially reported to have disappeared from their mother's Fairfax, Virginia home on August 24th, two months before they were their fully clothed bodies washed up on rocks in the Upper West Side of Manhattan bound together by duct tape at their waist and feet and facing one another. The timeline revealed Friday differed from earlier reports. Uh, now, let me show you, in terms of timeline, I, I think I want to show you the first part, the first part of this clip, because the uh, detective talks about the timeline here. 
if I remember it right. So let me just, let me do this. Let's, let's do this. Oops. No, I wanted to play it in the player. Let's see if I can do that. Right? I think I'm going to be able to do it. If it works. Here we go. 30th of 2017 is the last time the two girls were seen by the family. Back in November 30th of 2017 is the last time the two girls were seen by the family, and that's according to the family, and that's out of the residents in Virginia. In December of 2017, after they had... So stop right there. So already right there, that's a detail. According to the sisters' family, the last time they saw the sisters was November 30th, 2017. So remember, the family had come to America from Saudi Arabia, I guess two or three years ago. And I know the mother was here, one of the brothers at least was here, uh, the dad supposedly went back and forth. But think about that. They come from Saudi Arabia to America two or three years ago, and the family hasn't seen the daughters since, uh, uh, what was it? Um, November? Was that what it was? I can't remember what the date was. Let me, let me play that again. Back in November 30th of 2017. November 30th. So almost 11 months that the daughters hadn't seen the rest of the family for. Had, hadn't seen them. Hadn't seen them. So, um, so that's interesting. Let's, let's, let me just, uh, let's play this a little bit more about the timeline here is the last time the two girls were seen by the family, and that's according to the family, and that's out of the residence in Virginia. In December of 2017, after they had been reported from November 30th, they were at some point in time located and returned, but they were not returned to the home. They were returned to, I'll call it a shelter-like type facility, uh, due to some abuse allegations that came up. As you fast forward, the last time from December of 17 to August of this year, essentially about eight months. Uh, we do not have contact per se, but in the end of August, August 23rd or August 24th, the girls go missing from the facility where they had been staying again. So that's new. We, we had known that at the end of last year, the girls were reported missing uh, in Virginia. And then when they were found, they, they didn't want to go back home and they chose to be in a shelter or some shelter-like facility. Now we're hearing that the girls were in that facility. They never went home. So the girls went missing at the end of last year. They were found by authorities. They went, they went to the shelter-like facility. Uh, there were abuse allegations of some sort and the girls never went home. Uh, they were in this shelter-like facility from like last end of last year till August. So they, we had not heard that before. So again, they go missing end of last year. They get found by authorities. They don't want to go home. There's some sort of abuse allegation of some sort. Um, and, um, and then they go to this shelter type facility in Virginia and they stay there for eight months and they don't see the family. The family says they don't see them, haven't seen them since the end of last year. So even though they were all in Virginia, they weren't seeing each other. And then they went missing uh, from this shelter type facility uh, around, uh, around August 24th. So all of this new timeline information. Uh, Gaga Crazy says they, they feared something, that's for sure. DJ says it's like they were running from their family. So it's already odd. I mean, even before, even before the bodies turn up, I mean, it's already an odd story that you have them, you know, refusing to go home and living in this shelter-like facility in Virginia, and not seeing their family at all. And then they go, then so then they so so again, um, the timeline revealed different from earlier reports. Neither sister had lived with their parents or even seen them since November 30th, 2017, when they ran away. When they ran away, there were abuse allegations involving other family members were not corroborated, but the pair were removed from the home and placed in a shelter-type facility in Virginia, similar to one for domestic violence victims. 
So uh, it's not clear what exactly happened uh, at their house, at least now, but um, but I guess there were some abuse allegations, and, and, uh, and they never went home after that. And then on August 23rd or 23rd or 24th, they vanished. Uh, let me play a little more of this. Uh, the family tells us they had had no contact at all during this time. That takes us to Wednesday, October 24th, and that's the day you're all familiar with. Wednesday, October 24th. Okay, so October the 24th is the day the bodies were found. Um, and um, But before we get to the day the bodies were found, I want to show you some more details here. Uh, so, you know, they go missing from their Virginia shelter-like facility August 23rd and August 24th. And it says, police have been able to largely retrace their steps through detective work. The older sister's credit card records show they went from Virginia to Washington, D.C., and then made their way to Philadelphia. They arrived at New York on September 1st, 11 days before they were reported missing. So they get to New York on September 1st. They basically stayed in New York for two months until their bodies turned up. Shea said the sisters stayed at a number of high-end hotels in Manhattan and used the credit card to go shopping and order their meals together. So they were basically living on this credit card that the older sister had. Um, now, it's, it's very interesting, you know, if I'm guessing one theory would be they, they lived until they ran out of money. Um, but you'd think if the big worry was running out of money, they wouldn't be necessarily staying at high-end hotels. Um, so I'm not sure about that. And uh, detectives are also investigating claims they applied for asylum to remain in the United States. Detectives were told sisters had previously made systems. Sorry, detectives were told the sisters had previously made statements they would rather inflict harm on themselves, commit suicide, than return to Saudi Arabia. Deportation was a fear of theirs. And I believe this was reported in another, here's another one. AP says New York police, Saudi sisters spoke of harming themselves. People who knew the sisters in Virginia told investigators they made statements in the last year indicating they would rather inflict harm on themselves, commit suicide, than return to Saudi Arabia. So, uh, you know, it's, it's you're definitely getting a picture of these sisters who they clearly had some family issues. They seemed to not want to go back to Saudi Arabia, uh, and they weren't even seeing their family anymore in the U.S. Uh, there's more details here, but what do you think about all this so far, all this stuff we're learning? Give me a shout on Twitter. Let me know uh, what um, Let me know what uh, you think about all this. At Lookner on Twitter. Here's the comments from you guys. Uh, Hold the FBI accountable, says... This is a tragedy due to the death of two young women. Sadly, everything points to suicide pending autopsy reports. Now, there's some reports about the bodies, which I'll give you short, which I'll talk to you about shortly. Let's see. Fred Carter thinks someone found them. Hey, Fonzie, you're one second away from being blocked forever on the channel. So please, guys, look. Um, so, guys, you know, just the, the, the chat is for people who uh, want to talk about the topic. So, you know, if, if, if this is not your favorite topic, you can always watch a different stream or go watch something else. It's just don't distract people in the chat complaining about it because... They want to talk about the topic. So just, you know, go do something else. Come back next topic. That's fine. Uh, let's see here. Fire Captain says it's very possible if they were it's very possible they were abused and ran out of money. KJ Dub says, I want to know how Saudi Arabia found out they applied for asylum. 
it seems dangerous if that's U.S. policy. So that's it's certainly a good point, KJ Dub. Um, is the story true? What the mother said. The mother said that the Saudi the Saudi embassy had called them the day before the bodies were found, had called the mother and said, "Your family is ordered back here because your daughter's applied for political asylum." Now, how would they know that? Uh, I could see a world in which Saudi Arabia has some sort of contact in the U.S. government. Um, also, maybe that may, but that also might be part of. I don't know. Maybe it's part of the way these country, of countries work, where if somebody applies in your in your country for asylum. Maybe you do, especially if it's an ally, you inform the ally. So I don't know if the Saudis would be informed automatically if somebody applied for political asylum from Saudi Arabia in the United States. I don't know about that. Also, again, it hasn't been confirmed that they actually did apply for political asylum. Okay, guys, I'm going to start. Uh, I'm going to start. That's it, guys. You know what? Enough. Uh, I don't even care if you're a viewer. I've said it a million times. Um, if, if you don't like the topic, you don't have to be in the chat room. I'm just going to start blocking people. I, I just don't care. I don't care anymore. If you can't listen, if you want to just distract, if you can't follow simple instructions, I, I don't even want you in the chat room. So you'll be blocked. So no more. I'm not dealing with it anymore. No more people distracting the chat room. No trolls. I'm just going to start blocking people. My patience, my patience has run out. After five months of the network, my patience has run out. I've given enough warnings. I'm just going to start hiding people in the network. Okay. People have been warned. Anyways. So, um, so, 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 let's let's just to summarize the new information so far we've been talking about in this stream that came out today. Let's let's summarize the new information, okay? So, what we found out so far is this. One thing we found out is that, uh, according to people who knew the Saudi sisters uh, in Virginia, uh, they told investigators the sisters had made statements within the last year indicating they would rather inflict harm on themselves, commit suicide, than return to Saudi Arabia. Again, people who knew them told investigators the sisters had said they would rather commit suicide than return to Saudi Arabia. So that's one piece of uh, that's one piece of new uh, information. Okay. Now another one, which we talked about, is this new is this new timeline. And the new timeline is that um, is that um, neither sister had lived with their parents since November 30th, 2017, when they ran away, and so that was actually the last time they ever saw their family. They literally never saw their family again after November 30th, 2017. They went missing on 2017. The authorities found them. Uh, the, when the authorities found them. They didn't go back home. They, they requested to not go back home, and they were placed in a shelter-type facility in Virginia, similar to one for domestic violence victims. And there were some allegations involving other family members, abuse allegations involving other family members, which were not corroborated. So it sounds like when the women were found at the end of last year, they said, "We don't want to go back home. Our family's abusing us," and they ended up being in a shelter. So they stay in that shelter, the shelter type facility, for similar to one for domestic violence victims. They stay there for eight months in Virginia. They never see their family. Then they go missing from that facility in August. And then, from the credit card records, it's, it's, it's clear that they go from D.C. to Philadelphia. And then a week, about a week after they left in Virginia, they end up in New York on September 1st. Then they stay at a number of high-end hotels. And use the credit card to go shopping and order their meals together. And as you can see,、um, the authorities believe they were running out of money and were desperate not to return home. That's not even all the new information yet. That's the sum of what we got today. So that's catching you up on this information we've been hearing.、Um, but again.、Uh, Oh, and somebody in Lionel James says taped together is not suicide. I have information on that for you too. So there's 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 a lot more information here than, than the stuff I just gave. A lot of important information actually. Sharon Craig says I wonder if their parents were wealthy. Well, I haven't. That hasn't been confirmed, but I wouldn't be surprised.
Ricky B says they didn't want to go home. Now, let's see here. All right, so let me, I'm going to check the Facebook chat, but the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to show you, there's, there's some more information, a lot more information, actually, in addition to that. But let me just see what people in the Facebook chat are saying. If you have comments on this, write to me on Twitter, at Lookner on Twitter. FBI accountable says the autopsy could show foreign toxicology substances and it would make a difference whether it is a dry or wet ground. Uh, our viewer, oops, sorry, we'll talk about more about that shortly. shortly. Uh, Pamela Harry, Henry Owen says they were 22 and 16. How much on a credit card could they have gotten approved and only be in the U.S. a couple months? Well, you know, maybe their family was a very wealthy Saudi family. Uh, maybe their family was a very wealthy Saudi family and uh, they had like a big, you know, credit card uh, line. I don't know. Uh, maybe, you know, credit cards can be used internationally too. I can take my credit card and go to other countries and use it. So maybe they had a visa in, from Saudi Arabia or something that they could use here. Hey, thanks, by the way, to the Awakened One for your uh, donation. I very much appreciate that because... Your support is what allows me to do this network. It is agenda-free TV. We cover news without an agenda from around the world. And uh, I do this myself, so I can only do it thanks to your guys' donations. So thank you, Awakened One. I really appreciate it. If you want to support agenda-free TV and help keep us on the air, you can go to agendafree.tv, agendafree.tv, or go to the bottom of the YouTube chat and click on the dollars. Rita Pearl says, I just think there would be an easier way to kill yourself. Well, that is certainly, we're going to talk about that shortly, but that is certainly something you have to wonder, of why would they kill themselves this way? And then they would put themselves in the river. So anyway, we'll be talking about that. We'll be talking about that. Uh, Mark Vaccaro says, this is not hard to believe. They were done with their plan and needed to end it all since things didn't go right. Tape themselves up and toss themselves into the river, but it could be something else. Perry thinks um, they were murdered because she doesn't like the way Muslims treat women. She says they're treated like chattel. Now, I will say this. Uh, certainly, all Muslims don't treat women the same way. Um, uh, all of every religion doesn't treat women the same way. But I, I'm guessing what Karen is more focused on is that in certain communities, certainly in Saudi Arabia, in Saudi Arabia, it is well known that uh, women don't have a lot of uh, basic rights that men have. We talked, we've talked about that on previous streams. Maybe that was something that, that might have been a beef of theirs. Maybe that's part of why they didn't go back. I don't know. All right, let me show you some of the more, some more of the information. So as, as I said, as I said, there's, there's even more information here. We're going to give you some more of the information. And uh, thank you. Uh, thank you to Julie Graves. Thank you, Julie, for your support of Agenda Free TV. I really appreciate your support. Thanks for the donation. Okay. Now, let's talk. Let's talk about the new information here. Uh, more stuff. We already gave you some. I'm going to talk. There's more. There's more. There's plenty more. Okay. Now. Here's something about a witness. First of all, um, in video, so a couple things here. First of all, in video, police have been able to obtain of the pair from about a week before their death. So there is video of the pair a week before their deaths. They did not appear to be in distress and looked to be in good health and alone. Okay, but that might have changed in the days that followed. Shay said there was a strong possibility money was running out because the older sister had maxed out their credit card. I am guessing that authorities have access to their credit card record or something like that with their credit card balance. I'm guessing authorities have looked into this and they probably have a good idea whether the credit card was maxed out. Now, now here's the story about a witness. Um, uh, 
Police said a witness said he saw the pair in a playground near the river in Manhattan's Riverside Park on the morning that their bodies were found. On that same day their bodies were found, right near the river, a witness saw them. They were sitting about 30 feet away from each other with their hands in their heads. They appeared to be praying. Shea said the witness, who appeared to be credible, described the scene as haunting. Shea noticed you could walk right in the water from near the area they were seen. So again, a witness says that uh, the witness saw them together 30 feet apart, right on the edge of the river, the morning their bodies turned up, praying. So that's an, a whole other new piece of information we didn't have before. Now also, in terms of the river, uh, police investigators said yesterday the sisters appear to have been alive, which we talked about in the last stream. They appear to have been alive when they entered the river because their lungs were filled with water and there were no obvious signs of trauma. The medical's office, medical examiner's office is investigating the cause of death. A, a law enforcement official told NBC News the suicide remains a leading theory. So authorities believe that they were alive when they entered the water, but they're still not sure excuse me, about the cause of death. And you might say, well, when, isn't it just obvious they drowned because they were alive when they entered the water? Well, you don't know that. I mean, here's a scenario. I've been thinking to myself, so, you know, I can't imagine it's easy to jump into water and just let yourself drown, you know? So I was wondering, perhaps... Did they do something like take some kind of sedative or sleeping pills and say, here's our plan, we'll take some sleeping pills and put ourselves to sleep and then throw ourselves in the water, or some kind of heavy drugs? So one possibility, even if it was suicide, was that they would take something before going in the water, which would end up preventing them from swimming, and they would just drown. Or, or look, they could have taken some kind of thing that would have killed them before they even uh, drowned. So, uh, that's going to be an important question. Is there anything else in their system? So, but they were supposedly alive when they went in the water. So there's that. Uh, and then there's, a, there's another piece of news about how they were tied together. Let me give you that piece of news. Hold on. We hadn't heard this before. This was... Was it in this article? If not, I, I definitely... Let me play it. It's it's in this um, it's in this briefing. I think it's towards the end. He talks about it. This is the day that the passerby on the Hudson bike path discovered them and called 911, which brought the people behind me to the scene that day. Hold on. As Hold we on. move forward now, again, we know now as we look back. Hold on. I'm having an issue with this, with this thing. I'm trying to get to the part where. Uh, talks about um, he talks about how they were tied together which is important okay fine that's that okay I'm getting closer So I can't find it in the actual press conference. I wanted to play it for you. But, oh, this, oh, this website is driving me crazy. Um, but what he said is that the girls were tied together, but they were not bound together. He made that clear today. Uh, he said, what he said is that, like, they weren't tied together to bind them together. They were tied together more to just keep them together, to keep them from coming apart. So it didn't sound like that they were like super tightly tied together. It was more sounding like they just were tied together so that they wouldn't like float away from each other. That seemed to be what he was saying today. 
where is that? I know I saw it several times. Hold on. I want to show it to you. And I can't find it, of course. Of course I can't find it. I want to get the exact quote. Let's try it one more time. If I can. November. 30th of 2017 here. was the lovely about eight months time. That takes us to Wednesday, October 20th. As we move forward now, again and again at, at the hotels. When you when you look at um, the family members in this case, we have reports that asylum was requested. Uh, we also have reports of abuse involving the family. This is not corroborated at this time from us, but there are reports of abuse uh, between the brother, the mother, and the father that have been brought to our attention. And again, this is in another jurisdiction, and this is sometime in the past. October 31st, we're contacted by a eyewitness. The eyewitness calls the detective squads. The detectives to my right make contact with this individual, and they are told essentially by a credible source that on October uh, October 31st when he makes contact with us he tells us a story about a story that is haunting him his words he says that he is a frequent exerciser in the vicinity of Riverside Park on the exact day that the girls were record uh, found in the water he was at the park earlier that day approximately seven in the morning for his daily exercise routine he came across in a playground within Riverside Park two girls sitting about 30 feet apart. He described them as alone, just the two of them. They were sitting 30 feet apart, but he believed they were together. They were sitting with their hands in their heads, uh, their heads lowered, and they were making noises loudly that he described as praying. Uh, it is believed, or the possibility exists, that the girls, again, when you come back to how they were discovered with the duct tape, and duct tape that I would describe as not binding them tight together, more like keeping them together. Uh, it brings us to where we are today. We're still working very So that's what I was looking for. He said the duct tape was not binding them together. It was more keeping them together. So it almost sounds like, like they, you know, look, maybe they decided to take their own lives and they wanted to be found together. So they just, you know, tape their ankles together and waist just so somebody would find them both together and they wouldn't float away apart but it, it's he says it, it's not like they were bound together so that was interesting that was new information there's just a lot of new information today so anyways what do you think about all of this give me a shout on twitter uh what do you think about all this uh new information let me know what you think uh, Gator Man says it's possible they didn't want to be separated, so their bodies were going to be found together. It makes sense. Uh, Doc Cigar says Solidarity Sisters. And you know, it looks like there, there were. It looks like they may have had to return home soon. I mean, their mother said that the uh, that the embassy had ordered them home because they had asked for asylum, which we can't confirm. But also, reportedly, we had told you before in an earlier stream, the younger sister had just gotten some scholarships to some prestigious Saudi school. So, look, maybe they didn't want to go home. Uh, maybe they didn't want to go home and live with their family. Maybe this, maybe it was, I don't know if it's that, you know, clearly there were some family issues. Maybe they didn't want to be in Saudi Arabia. Maybe they really just didn't want to be with their family and they thought that they would have to be in their family in Saudi Arabia. So, a lot we don't know here, but... Again, a leading theory, according to authorities, is that this was suicide. Torchy thinks the money was running out, they weren't going back to Saudi Arabia, double suicide was their way out. Cage asked if they were here legally. I have, the Saudi government was certainly aware they were here. Uh, but I don't know, I don't know if they had a visa to be here. I don't know. They were here for several years, but I, I don't know how that works. Uh, I, I, I would, certainly they weren't sneaking around, so I would be surprised if they didn't have a visa because, like, how did they get in the country otherwise? They, the Saudi government knew they were here, 
So it's not like they snuck in with nobody knowing. So, but I, I haven't had it confirmed that they had a visa. I mean, I, I don't think the the U.S. authorities have said have said like anything about those details. Barry says, I just think it's sad whether they were killed or committed suicide. Chris Davis says, never hear of taping yourself together for a suicide. Well, you know, I, I look, if it was a, certainly you wonder why if they committed suicide, was that the way they did it? Uh, why do it by going into the river? Also, I would think, I don't know, I don't think it'd be hard to drown yourself, but maybe they took something before they went in the river. Maybe, maybe this wasn't symbolic to them, you know? Sharon Snyder says 30 feet is far apart. So Sharon's talking about how this witness saw them both together, supposedly, the morning, the, the morning of the day their bodies were found. They were right next to the river, both with their heads down and praying 30 feet apart, but the witness said he could tell they were together. Lionel James says, sad, couldn't find no help. Spirit detective, stay on topic, my friend. Lionel James also says different thought process from different country we wouldn't understand. It's certainly possible that where they're from, uh, this kind of suicide maybe is more common. I don't know, but I'm not familiar. You know, they would have grown up in a different culture. Bad girl says maybe someone didn't want them talking. And authorities haven't ruled out the possibility of murder. They're just, you know, there's no obvious trauma to the bodies. Mia says because they wanted to stay together and wanted to make sure either didn't pull out of suicide. Path. Cage says very sad story. Loretta Adair says, I don't understand how they can be taped at the ankles and walk into the water facing each other. So, now, there is a chance now, you know, there's a story they were found facing each other. But, and that's, I'm guessing that's true, but that doesn't necessarily mean, you know, I'm wondering if they were just, they happened to be facing each other when they were found, like, but that was how their bodies ended up. It doesn't, just because they were found facing each other doesn't mean that that's the only way they could have been found. So we don't know that. Some people are asking questions about the witness who, not that, well, the witness that we heard from isn't the one who came upon the body. The witness we heard from today from the authorities is someone who saw them before, supposedly saw them the day that, that they ended up getting killed. Faiza Z says in Saudi Arabia, suicide is forbidden. Let me see something. Let me see if I can confirm that. Um, this article in Science Direct, it's an academic article, says... In Islamic countries such as the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, the definitive Islamic law, according to Sharia doctrine, suicide is forbidden. It is considered to be a criminal act against oneself. But, at the same time, they do have them once in a while. But that's interesting. I didn't know that. Uh, the wrists were not taped together, just their waist and their ankles. Ray Murphy says, it's a terrible outcome, prayer for the girls. All right, let me just see some of the other details. 
details I want to show you about this. If you have comments, write to me on Twitter, at LookNerd. Let me know what you think about these new details. Hold the FBI accountable says, it's hard to intentionally drown oneself as air hunger is the strongest reflex. My guess is they took some medications like, I don't know, that is scopolamine and walked together into the water. As I was saying, I wouldn't be surprised if that's the case. I, I, it would seem that if that was their plan to go in the water, um, the quote unquote easier way of doing it would be to take something before doing it. But we haven't heard from the authorities about what was found in their bodies. If that, if they did that, I'm guessing it will show up in, from 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 the examination of the bodies. Now I also don't know. We very well might never know what happened between them and their family. I mean, remember, this isn't even something. I mean, the I'm guessing the mother, because the mother said that they, the family had been ordered back to Saudi Arabia. I wouldn't be surprised at all if the mother and the, the family goes back to Saudi Arabia. And at a certain point, if the family goes back to Saudi Arabia, uh, you know, how much investigating is the U.S. going to do about this? So I don't know if we'll ever get to the bottom of what specifically happened uh, with their family. Were the abuse allegations true? Were they being abused by member people in their family? rather harm themselves and go, they would rather commit suicide than go back to their own country. Home country. Well, then, now this says the sisters' bodies were taped together facing each other and fully clothed. Okay, fine. No obvious signs of trauma. It appeared they were alive when they went into the water. Okay, there's a lot of details we've heard before. But again, you know, that other new detail I wanted to say again that we hadn't heard before today, which was they literally hadn't seen their family since oct since the end of last year. I believe it was November of last year. And in November of last year, they ran away from their parents, or for, well, at, least, at least their mom. I don't know if the dad was here at that time. But they ran away from the family's house. They were eventually found by authorities. They never went back home. They, there were supposedly some abuse allegations. They ended up in a shelter, similar shelter site facility like they use for domestic violence victims. They stayed there for eight months in Virginia, never seeing their family, and then they just left and went to New York. So they, they, they never saw their family, hadn't seen them since last November. So that shows you something was up with the family. crazy says they were running in fear of someone for a long time I think that person found them you know another thing that it's interesting that Gaga brings up maybe there was somebody in their family who they were afraid of and they got word that that person found out where they were that's another possibility that would be something which could also be a suicide but not because their money was running out maybe they had just been tracked down by whoever they were hiding from Just justice, we don't know where their credit card was from. LJD says, I'm really surprised they hadn't seen their family since last year. Some people, a Lionel James and the New Jersey Devil in our chat room are asking about the idea of whether there would be cameras uh, in New York City. There, I could definitely, I could very well see the possibility there could be cameras, um, you know, by the river. Although I don't, I, I feel like the way the authorities were talking about this, 
It would seem weird to me, excuse me, if the authorities were making such a big deal about this witness seeing them praying, if there were just cameras there and they could see it for themselves. Uh, you'd think if there were cameras all the way up the river, they would by now have just looked at all the footage and figured out exactly where they went in the river, especially if it was near, you know, where the witness said they went in. So I don't know uh, what the camera situation there is. Gen 2020 says being abused and family pro family disowned them properly. Prob uh, probably. Justice says it seems odd going from a shelter to high-end hotels on a mysterious credit card. Well, I mean, then you wonder, like, so they were in a shelter in, in, for eight months kind of place. So, like, what made them leave? Why did they suddenly run away from the shelter in August? Something must have made them leave the shelter in August and, and go away. Um, go, go to New York. Azem says they lived in the U.S. long enough to know that no one can force them to go back to Saudi Arabia, so why suicide? Well, look, if you're a Saudi, look, Saudi citizens can only be out of the country if the government lets them go. Remember Jamal Khashoggi's son wasn't allowed to come to the U.S. One of his sons wasn't allowed to come to the U.S. until like a couple weeks ago, uh, even though he wanted to come. So I would think they could make you go back. They could certainly, the Saudi government, if they're the ones allowing you to go, they can just revoke their permission for you to go. And then you become like a fugitive. Uh, you know, so, uh, and then may you know, so I, I don't know. I, I don't, you know, it's not necessarily the case that they could, you know, come and kidnap you. Although maybe the girls thought that might happen. Maybe the girls thought that if they didn't go back, they would be harmed in some way. Sadie Green says this is very sad. Mordrina thinks that they were, if they had gone back to their home country, they would have been killed. DJ says, doesn't didn't their mom live in Virginia? Yes, they were all originally living in Virginia. And I believe the mom is still in the country. Craig Childers says maybe one of them got pregnant and that would turn their family against them if this was found out. You know, something we talked about in a previous stream we haven't talked about tonight, but certainly I would think what you'd have to look at is, did any of them with their dating life, was their dating life maybe different than their family wanted? Maybe the family wanted them to date a certain kind of person. Uh, I could see maybe they didn't want to. There's a world in which the family wanted them to marry somebody in particular and they didn't want to marry that person. Or maybe the family wanted them to date somebody who was Saudi and they wouldn't want to do that. Or maybe the family wanted them, maybe one of them was gay and the family didn't like that. I mean, I can, I can go on and on. There's all these different possibilities, but it certainly seems like that is something that, that could be a potential source of friction is any kind of personal relationships they stuff had they had going on that the family didn't approve of. And then let's also, you know, don't forget, look, there's also a possibility, you know, some some people and some young people included are just troubled. And, and, you know, maybe we don't know what their life was like back in Saudi Arabia. Maybe in Saudi Arabia, similar stuff had happened. Maybe they ran away from home when they were in Saudi Arabia. Maybe they had a troubled upbringing. So, you know, we really don't know a lot. Lionel James thinks maybe they were too westernized. Gaga Crazy says maybe a boyfriend paid for the hotel room, etc. Now, it looks like authorities, though, have a record of where the money came from to pay for this stuff. And they think it came from their credit card. Ryak says they all want their kids to marry a certain type of person. It's a horrible situation. Now, I'm not going to, uh, you know, say they all want that, but I, you know, again, women don't have, uh, 
uh, as many freedoms in Saudi Arabia as they do here. So, and also, we don't know. It's you know, there, there. Are, I'm guessing there are families in Saudi Arabia where they care more or less about who you marry, just like there are in America. There are families in America who really care who you marry, and some of them really don't care who you marry. So, but certainly, so many possibilities. But I don't know if we'll ever really find out. Lipstick writes, I wondered if they thought they could possibly be killed or tortured after they got back to their home country and would rather leave this earth on their own terms. Possible. Uh, possible that they thought that. Possibly they just thought that their lives would be miserable if they went back to their home country. Maybe this was really all about the family. Maybe it was much more about living with their family than the home country. Hold the FBI accountable, says these young women were afraid of something, either in Saudi Arabia or the U.S. This is certainly a tragedy. An autopsy will check for pregnancy status. Bobo Salish says this is a strange and sad case. Um, Liz Bellin says, couldn't the parents have found out where they were by the credit card bill? Now, we don't know that the parents didn't know. The parents might have known where they were, uh, but we don't know, you know, if, if, just because the mother knew where they were doesn't mean the mother was going to come and get them. So uh, it's, it's not clear to me that the parents didn't know where they were. Uh, I, I, I believe the parents eventually figured, at least the mother, I believe, eventually figured out they were in New York. Because I, I think I remember that they had reported that the younger sister missing and then canceled that, I think, when she went to, when they found out she went to New York to be with the older sister. says Saudi Arabia wouldn't have let them leave if they wanted them dead and again these girls weren't famous so any political view they had means nothing although if they really did request asylum that might be a big no-no Bob Probert thinks they were afraid of someone in their home in the USA they've been here two or three years Well, maybe we'll hear more. Um, Torchy says, trust me, the mother was the enemy, so was the dad and the brother. So maybe we'll hear more in the next couple of days. We, we certainly have been hearing um, a bunch new. I mean, we got a lot of new information on this today. So maybe the authorities have a bunch more. You know, maybe, uh, maybe, maybe they might have had friends who have talked to authorities. Cell phone records. I don't, you know, if they have American cell phones, maybe they can get it from the American cell phone providers. And uh, so maybe we, maybe we'll hear more. Well, another thing we're going to hear, we're definitely going to hear uh, the report from, you know, the toxicology report, uh, well, the report about their bodies, if there's any drugs in their system or anything. But as as to what happened with the family and that and the abuse allegations, you know, the authorities said today there were abuse allegations, but they're not sure about them happened and you know uh, I'm guessing they probably talked to people in Virginia like the women were staying at this shelter type place maybe the women talked about what happened to them to the people at the shelter but maybe it's confidentiality and the people at the shelter aren't allowed to talk about it so Michelle says we will find out Seth says any connection to Khashoggi I have not heard any connection between Oh, Saska points out that in the, in the hotels they stayed in, there were probably 
uh, lobby cameras. So I'm guess I'm guessing there's a bunch of shots of them going in and out and stuff. It's all BS. Says they always have so much more info than they release. Lars says all things point to suicide. Well, I will let you know um, if uh, Linda Belk says it's a delicate situation with them being foreign nationals. Look, maybe, maybe, you know, that does come into play here. Maybe we would have heard more already, but they are Saudi citizens. So, you know, maybe there's information we can't get because they're Saudi citizens, or maybe, you know, Saudi Arabia might say, I don't know how that works. Could so, would Saudi Arabia say to like the New York police, we'd be we'd be really nice of you if you didn't like go into too much detail here. I could see that conversation happening. But I will certainly uh, keep you posted. So if you want to, if, if if I hear more, I'll put it on my Twitter. You can follow me on Twitter at Lookner at Lookner on Twitter. That's where I post news updates. But uh, all right, I think I'm going to wrap up this live stream. But I appreciate you joining, and thanks to all of you for sending in your comments and your thoughts on this and offering your perspective. And, uh, well, at least we're getting more information on this. So authorities seem to be leading suicide here, but a lot, a lot we don't know, a lot we don't know. So anyways, if you want to see, I, I can't find, it's weird, I, I, don't, I haven't found where the NYPD, if they post their press conferences at all. I looked at their Facebook and their Twitter, and I don't see them anymore. But there is a clip, like in this NBC article, there's a three and a half minute clip where we showed you a little bit of it. Uh, but if you want to watch this uh, clip, you can go to the NBC News article here. And you can see the three and a half minute clip. But I actually haven't found anywhere where they have the, the whole thing. I went to their YouTube page, the NYPD. The last thing they have posted is from a month ago. So it's kind of confusing. I don't know why they don't just have a Facebook page where they post these things. Uh, maybe they do and I'm missing it. I, I've tried to find it. Doc Cigar, Doc Cigar says that we won't hear much from Saudi Arabia. But thank you for writing in and watching and giving your comments. Um, also, thanks to our moderators, Freckles. And um, thank you to... Um, oh, by the way, I want to welcome our newest moderator, Kevin McKinnon. Uh, Kevin has very nicely volunteered to help us out. So thank you, Kevin, our new moderator. I appreciate it. Thank you, Freckles. And thank you to Elizabeth Granville. Blue for moderating in the YouTube chat room. And Mark Helton, thank you. And uh, thank you to the people who donated. Uh, your donations are what allows me to do this channel. Uh, it is Agenda Free TV. We don't have an agenda, and we just bring you news, all kinds of news from around the world, live news coverage. But I do this myself, and I really do rely on your support to pay the expenses and keep it on the air. So if you like this kind of coverage and you want to support Agenda Free TV, Go to agendafree.tv, agenda, agendafree.tv, or go to the bottom of the YouTube chat and click on the dollar sign. And uh, if you want to know when we're coming on the air with our future broadcast, our next broadcast, be sure to subscribe to us on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, Periscope, Agenda Free TV. Thanks also to Kelly Davis for the Super Bowl. Thank you, Kelly. Okay, thank you for saying thank you. Uh, Graham Murphy says it's a heavy and intense story. I agree. Thank you, Craig Childers. Thank you, Mia. And yeah, we might have, depending on what happens, there might be more news tonight. So if there's big news, I will come back on the air test. Thanks to everybody in the Facebook chat as well. Thank you, Liz Bell. Margie Williams says we can continue to pray for the good Lord to expose the truth. And thank you, Michelle.
Okay, that's gonna be be it, be it from here, and uh, hopefully, hopefully we hear more soon on this. But at least we're starting to hear more information. So I'd rather have more information than less. Uh, all right, and thank you, John. Cole. All right, so that's it for right now. Mordrina says, "I hope the truth comes out. I do as well." Jay Dillon says, "These young women deserve justice." All right, that's it for now, guys. Uh, thank you for tuning in, and um, we will see you soon with more live news coverage here at Agenda Free TV.